It's a pleasure to be here. I've driven by here many times, and I thought I didn't think there'd ever be a chance that I'd ever get to uh, give a talk in your uh, library because it's a combination elementary school and high school. Or high school, no, elementary and town library. Uh, this is my second day on the road. This is my third talk so far. So, I'm originally from around Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Any Pennsylvanians here? Used to be. Where? Um, Norristown, outside of Philadelphia. What town? Norristown. Norristown, okay. Heard of that one. Uh, nobody else. I went to King's College. My grandfathers came from Slovakia. That's why I got the name Potskutch. Means jump up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he and my other grandfather was from Lithuania. You know where they had the NATO big talks there? Usually you never hear of Lithuania, okay? Because it's a small Balkan country. And they came and they worked and they got black lung. And that's why people say, let's keep using coal. And you could see what's happening. All that uh, carbon uh, dioxide are going into the air. Now we slow down and we ship the coal from Wyoming all the way to China or to uh, India. And then climate change. You know, people, people, I think, are starting to think, yes, there is such a thing as climate change. Finally, you know, after they t told you in the 90s, you know. Uh, so I went to, got a job teaching in New Jersey. Any New Jersey people? And uh, I taught fourth grade. I was supposed to be a high school teacher, but that was a job. So I didn't know what I was doing. I had a blind boy in class, I had a deaf girl, and they had 34 kids. Do you have 34 kids in fourth grade here? So you could just imagine me, supposed to be trained to work with high school kids, uh, but I love fourth grade. Uh, and then I taught seventh and eighth grade history. I love history, and I hope you people love history too as much as I do. And I've got this passion for spreading the word about the CCCs, because a lot of people don't know. And you people are living right here where our camp was. Where I live in Connecticut, I have two in our town. Unique. Now, before I go any further, too, I, in the 1980s, a lot of the guys were, that were in the CCCs all over the United States got together and they had clubs. They would get together once a month and they would share stories and try to get Washington to have a CCC, you know, now, okay? The shirt that I'm wearing, okay, is when I went to Montana, Missoula, Montana, and they have, it's like the CCCs of Montana. There's in California, Vermont has like the CCCs too, and they're up on, uh, towards Burlington, and they do even farming work. Anybody know about their, any of their kids? in that CCC group. So, so when these guys started dying around uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 100, uh, a group from Virginia called CCC Legacy was formed. And we try, and I'm on the board now, we try to get the word out to people. That's why I'm giving 60 talks in five states, trying to yeah, yeah. And, and I told my wife, says, Marty, you're dragging too much, you know. Uh, but the thing is, if you don't go out there, you know, these ladies in uh, different parts, they're old and they don't want to go out. I, I'm crazy. Uh, so I'm going to pass these around. If you might be interested in joining this organization, $20 a year, and you get four newspapers a year, and every year, except for the past things with COVID, we go to a different state. I've gone to Montana, saw the work of the CCCs, South Carolina. There was not one state park in 1933 in South Carolina. Can you imagine that? Not one until the CCC came. Then I went to uh, New York, below Rochester. There is beautiful Letchworth State Park. Anybody go there? It's unbelievable. It's in a canyon like this. There's a hotel down at the bottom. And the boys did the trail work. It's just incredible. And they have 
one of these statues. Almost all the states has one or more statues to honor the, the worker. A couple of states don't have one. Guess what state doesn't have one? Vermont. Uh, Connecticut, we have two. We got two in one year. So if you could raise $24,000, and some of the people are thinking about putting one at the foot of Stowe, uh, ski area, because the CCC boys, okay, under your uh, forester, he went to Sweden in the 20s, and he saw people skiing, and he came back and he said, you know, that would be a great way to make money if we had skiing in Vermont. So, they started in 1933 and 34, building the first ski trail. Oh, down, down the mountain, okay? Then the next year, another one. The third year, another one. So this, I hope we could be able to get at least one here. So I'm going to pass these around. If anybody would like to keep read it, if you like it, possibility. If you're not interested, just turn it in so I, because these are expensive for me to print up myself. So if this lady, what's your first name? Helen's going to be our answer of <laughs> Do you remember when you were in school and you got to be the answer of Or when I was in fourth grade? Would you pass the garbage around today? Remember that one? We also had basket, uh, waste basket uh, basketball. Did you remember that one? We bounced the ball to see who could get it in. That was in the seventh grade. So, yeah, if you're interested, it gives you what we try to do. And hopefully, you know, we could be able to get a statue someplace. Half Good Palm would be a really good place. I've been trying to get Lyman Horton to do it. You know, as the Vermont Country Stores. He loves the CCC. And he even put a sign by the west of uh, a road right where the CCC campus. Now, you see all the books I've done in retirement. Now we're going to have a little contest. Amy, you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. Where's Amy? Or Claire? I need uh, the scorekeeper. We're going to give a little prize out today. Okay? Now, in Bolt Landing, I had a tie. Six people. They all had the same score. And one person we had to finally figure out who would win the prize. Uh, so, how many have seen the movie Dead Poet Society? Okay, in that movie, the teacher trying to get the kids interested, he had this say, Carpe diem, Futuri Cousin. For 10 points, you got to raise your hand. What does Carpe diem mean? Yes? Seize the day. Seize the day. You were very close. Uh, seize the day. What's your first name? Dave gets 10 points. Okay? So, I try to seize the day. When I retired in 2001, I've got 11 books done. And hopefully next year I'll have number 12. And then I'm going to go to Massachusetts. I've been in Massachusetts. How many have been to Mount Greylock? You know the lodge up there? Built by the CCC. So I gave a talk a month ago there, Mount Greylock. And gave a talk there at dinner stayed with my wife at the, at the inn. And on September 7th, in September, guess where I'm going to be? Boston Central Library, Copley Square. Did you take a look at that picture of that library? It's like, I'm not going to be there. But spreading the word, so that's what I, I try to do. So these are all the books I've done. Now, I left, I met my wife in, uh, in uh, New Jersey, and she was from Connecticut and also had farms. Her dad was a dairy farm in Dutchess County, you know where that is, in New York State, uh, and also around uh, Schenectady. But I came to a little town called Delhi, near Oneonta, Cooperstown, the baseball thing, Albany, Binghamton. Okay, so there I was for 33 years. I, my wife and I, we bought this old farmhouse along the west branch of the Delaware River. 
It was abandoned. Our town had a little junior college, two years, and dairy farms. So I had the dairy farmers and the professor's kids. It was neat. So this place was abandoned for uh, two years or three years after the college kids moved out. So nobody wanted it, so I got it for 27,510 acres of land. It's lucky, huh? But I just had to do one room at a time, cut the whole place, you know, the lap boards, etc. Great place. And right up at the top of the mountain was a fire tower. I had no idea that that would be my future beginning, writing books about fire towers. And there was a fire tower up on top of Bramley Mountain. Didn't even know it. And then it was taken down the next year. So I taught him in school that was built by the WPA during the Depression. Now, 10 points, raise your hand. What does WPA stand for? Yes. Say it again. 10 points. Works Progress Administration. Okay? Now, when I was in school, I remember I had memorize all these. TV, Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, so many of these things. Roosevelt tried to give people jobs, and they did, okay? Got people going, well, look at the school. Imagine that. It was built by local guys. They were married. The CCC were guys 18 to 25, right down the road here, unemployed and out of school and single. So Roosevelt didn't want them wandering the streets, you know, give them a job, okay? So look at that school, isn't that amazing? And other town halls, they did roads, bridges, dam, park, and they kept going. That, that was 1935, but two years before that was the CCC. Now, when I came to this town, uh, we never had an author come to the school. So this boy came up to me, he said, Mr. Potscott, you know this book, My Side of the Mountain, is all about Delhi. Delhi? This Ricky D town I'm at, and it won the Newberry Award. How many have seen Newberry Award books in the library? The best book for kids. Every year, the librarians all over the United States get together and they vote. What's the first place, second place? So this lady won it for my side of the mountain about Delhi, where I was teaching. She also won it for Julie of the Wolves. She wound up writing a hundred nature books. So I found out that she was from Chappaqua, New York, for 10 points. Name some other famous people that live in Chappaqua. Who? No. No. Hillary Clinton. Dave. Holy moly, 10 points. Did you teach history or something? No. Reading. Reading. Okay, I told you people to read chapter two, didn't you? Last night? Mm -hmm. Amy, didn't we tell them? I, I thought I did. <laughs> okay, very good. So, I, I Googled uh, Jean George, Chappaqua, 555 in the area Bingo, I got her phone number. So one night, I dialed the number, and a lady answered. And I said, is Jean George there? She said, speaking, this is the lady got the word twice, the best book for kids, right? I'm just a teacher from Delhi. Oh, Delhi, what a wonderful town. I said, we're poor, we can't afford an author. Could you be our author? I'd love to come. So here, Jean George was coming to our school, our first book fair, and I told 15 other writers, they all wanted to come because Jean George was coming. I had 15 writers. K through 12, and every year I did it for 25 years. The authors came for free, and some of them stayed at my house. Now, for 10 points, name this author. Raise your hand if you know. Yes. Correct. What's your name? Anne Marie. Anne One word or two? Two words. Okay. With an E or not? No. No E. Because we got it just in case we have. But this guy from the Berkshires, he came, he's the, what book did he write? 
Right. A hungry caterpillar. Another 10 points for Anne Marie. How many have read that to your children? Your grandkids. The very hungry caterpillar. No? <laughs> no grandchildren. How about your children? Don't have any children. No. <laughs> Why? The worm got around. But he came and he stayed at our house and made breakfast for him, had uh, French toast and maple syrup. And my daughter Christy sat on his lap and he read The Hungry Caterpillar. I had Anne Martin a babysitter books. Did any of your, your kids read the babysitter books? Nope. Not yet. Okay, or never. Uh, Paula Danziger. Uh, I had Bruce Colville. How about Howard Koch? He wrote Casablanca. How many of you have liked the movie Casablanca? I had the author who wrote it and won the Academy Award when I was born in 1943. Can you imagine? And he said, kids, in the high school, he said, kids, when I was in the 1950s, I was blackballed by Senator McCarthy. He called me and other guys communists. I couldn't get a job. I had to go to England and right under a pen name, he said, if you believe in something, the whole world's against you, stand up for what you think is right. And in our times today, are people strong enough to say the truth, you know, and even, you know, go against and, and be laughed at. So I first got interested in fire towers when I climbed Hunter Mountain in 87. How many have climbed the fire tower sometime in your life? Where are they? Here and... Uh, Here? In town? Okimo. Okimo, okay. New Hampshire, which one? A bunch. Uh, Stratton and then I was looking at the time, um, what's the one down? It just closed. Glastonbury. Glastonbury? Yeah. Okimo, Alice, Elmore, we aren't going up top in Elmore. Oh, that's right, Elmore. Elmore. Really? Are you with the Forest Fire Lookout Association? Uh, not officially, no. Join it. So I used to be the state director of New York. That's yeah, another thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, wow. So I walked, climbed up, and it was October, and of course it started snowing by the time I got to Hunter Mountain. And then met the guy, the observer. We came into his cabin, and he said, Guys, this is the greatest job in the world being paid to sit up there, watch for smoke, and meet thousands of people. Hunter Mountain gets thousands of people from all over the world. So I told the publisher, I said, somebody should write a book. So back 10 years later, the publisher called me up. He said, Marty, how would you like to write a book about the Catskill Fire Towers? You see, it took me three years to do this. But I felt, wow, to have a book in Barnes and Noble and Borders. Yeah. So I, then I went into the Adirondacks and did the 57 Towers out there, 57 Towers met the uh, observers, rangers, plus, look at these towers. They started out with wooden towers, 1909. They all got the idea from Maine. Start, uh, Maine started in 1905. Uh, wooden towers like this, and the observers stayed in the cabin, and they would uh, take the uh, telephone line. Yeah hang it on trees, so whenever they saw a smoke, they would call up the ranger and get it right at its beginning. So the CCC boys built the towers, Stratton, they didn't do Elmore, they did the cabin, uh, and Okima, I forget which other one. So Mount Scudney, I think, yes, CCC boys, I think it was from the Plymouth group. Okay, they moved. So, I also did stories about the Adirondacks. And I had a comic book illustrator come and he said, Marty, let's do something together. So, every week we did, I sent him pictures and a caption, and he put it Teddy Roosevelt, finding out on Mount, um, what's it, what's the highest mountain? Mount, no, in the Adirondacks. 
Marcy. Marcy. He found out he had to come down, uh, and he took the train to Buffalo. So it became the president. How about Adirondack Chairs? Westport. Uh, Lake Champlain. All, wherever you go, you see Adirondack Chairs. All started right in the Adirondacks. Remington, the famous uh, artist, he also spent time in the Adirondacks. And this guy, Sam Glansman, he did stuff for outdoor life. Anybody ever get outdoor life? Good. You know, these comic things he did for six years. People would send a letter, I'm being attacked by a wild boar or a bear, and he would illustrate it. So, then somebody had pictures of CCCs in the Adirondacks. So I went from fire towers to the men who were building up our forests, fighting forest fires, okay? And uh, planting trees, building roads in the, uh, in the forest. So I went all around the Adirondacks, just like I'm doing now. People share their stories and pictures. So I'm going to get your stories, hopefully, pictures about your camp or any place else, just like that lady. I'm gonna, did everybody see the pictures from that lady of the Peru camp? And building the road from the Danby Road all the way to Peru in Weston? Land Road. Huh? Land Road. Yeah, the Land Road Road. Okay, so I went around and I interviewed about a hundred guys that were in the Adirondacks, different parts of New York, and also they went out west. These boys, like the boy from Schenectady, who's so poor, they sent first to I think was it, uh, Glacier National Park in Montana. Anybody ever go there? Mm -hmm. You've been there? Wow. So he spent there the summer, and then the snow started. So they shipped them to California, Death Valley Day, you know, remember the show of Death Valley Days? And there, he said, during the, sun, the daytime, it would be hot, but at night, it would be so cold, you need four blankets. Okay? So, i got to pass this around. Before, I was just ready to tell you this one. But this lady from Bolt Landing, she had this, her dad, blanket, and she sent me, me a note, and I passed it around. Nice cool and blanket now. I hope you're not allergic. One lady in the audience was allergic. So I had to be careful of this. Was, was that blanket made in I don't know. Do they make blankets here? Woolen blankets? Woolen blankets. In Cavendish? Yes, sir. No. Where? They did own milk. Woolen milk? Yeah, they supplied for World War I and World War II. We were on the hit list. Well, this comes around. See if there's some kind of label, but she wrote a little note about her dad. Start with this. Started from the back. Okay. Then I went to Connecticut. I left because my three kids now live in Connecticut and my grandbabies are in Connecticut. So why be in Florida? Some people would love to go to Florida. I went there three years. Missed my grandkids. So I came back. This, these are all the camps where I live now, in the town I live in, East Hampton, okay, had two camps, uh, Cobalt and Stewart. And uh, most of them were up in Mount Litchfield, if you ever go to Kent, up in the northern part, plus this part here. And we had a statue. I hope we could get one like this, the CCC worker statue, someplace in Vermont. Rhode Island doesn't have Okay. Then I went to Rhode Island because the guy wanted to know where his dad was. So I went around and did a book on the seven camps. It was all based on the population of the state. The more people in the state and that people were on relief, they had more camps. More boys could sign up. Whereas Vermont, not too many, but what's his name? Perry, Perry Merrill. He went to Washington. As soon as the law was passed, and he had all these plans, what to do, how to build dams to prevent the Winooski from overflowing, okay? Although the one dam just wasn't big enough to stop the water from coming in Montpelier. Okay, it went over the top. It didn't break. It's just they had too much to start with. And then too much rain. And you, I heard you people have 
a reservoir that is able to protect your area, right? Wait a minute, down to Springfield. Yeah. Five of them. There are five of them? Five dams. To protect Springfield? Um, we can't build them. Really? Wow. But somehow, up on the mountain, that's where the cave is. Oh, yes. But the depression was rough, okay? I didn't grow up, I was born in 43. But my parent, my mother had eight sisters and one brother, and her father died when she was eight. So how my grandmother made potato pancakes, koshi, you know, and they, my, my mother said we never start. You know, they got an orange for Christmas. That was a big thing to get an orange. And, and uh, what else? The older kids worked in the, the soap mill, 10 cents an hour. But same thing around here, you know, poor people, unless you had a farm, maybe. 25% uh, of the people were unemployed. 25%. Roosevelt was elected in uh, 1932, and when he signed, uh, was inaugurated, he proposed, I'm going to start a civilian conservation corps. Because he was, he was used to doing it when he was uh, in office before that. But who did Roosevelt beat by raising your hand in the election of 32? No? Anybody raise your hand? Starts with H. Yes! Hoover. Hoover! Amy, the librarian, gets 10 points. She's on the board. Okay. So Hoover was elected, or uh, defeated, and when he... His first hundred days, this is when he came through with all these alphabet uh, laws. And it was called the Emergency Conservation Work Act. Okay? And later we called it the CCCs. And he went to Congress on the 27th with this uh, proposed law, and it passed four days later. House and Senate, just like we do today. <laughs> Can you imagine our Congress? They don't sit down together and let's get things done. Yeah. So he said, I want 250,000 young boys, 18 to 25, in camps by July. Who could be able to give them food, clothing, shelter, and medical care? Raise your hand if you take it up. U.S. Army. Correct. What's your name? Perry. Perry? Perry. Neil Perry. <laughs> First Perry. name. Neil. Neil. Okay, Neil, 10 points. Maybe. Okay. Got it? Okay. Or, just, a, just, you know, Perry Merrill was a forester. You named after? No, but my grandfather's name is Merrill Perry. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get a cup of coffee. For that. No. Okay. Oh, I went to this bathroom. I tried to find a place in Springfield to eat. <laughs> the library said, Go down to the co-op. How many have been to the co-op? Very. I mean, I thought I was in Whole Foods, you know, with all the really good vegetables, sandwiches. You could even make your own um, tacos. Soup. You know, it's just unbelievable. So if you're ever down there, if you like some good food there, if you go for it that much. I mean. Okay. And look at Perry there. There he is. Yeah. He's the guy. He was born in Westport, where the Adirondack chairs were invented. And he was a poor farm boy. And his father, and he saved up money, and he went to Syracuse University, forestry. And he came back, and he went across the lake to Vermont, and he started as a forester. Wound up in charge of all the forests of uh, Vermont. And when you go into a park that is built by the CCC, you have a nice sign proclaiming this. Not many states do that. You know, we don't have that in Connecticut or in Rhode Island that I've seen it, or even the Adirondacks. They don't have the sign. Okay? So he was very important. He went to Washington and he got 34 camps. Rhode Island and more people small state, they got seven camps. Now, where was he going to get the boys? They didn't have enough boys. 
So they brought boys from Massachusetts who were on relief. Rhode Island, Connecticut, who came up here. And some of these boys, one of the boys came to Bellows Falls uh, from New Bedford, you know, with all the Portuguese and the uh, fishermen down there. And he said, my father came there to the camp. And one time he went downtown, you know, on Saturday for a dance or something, and he met his, his future wife. And he said, and they got married. He said, Marty, if my father didn't, uh, if it wasn't for the CCC, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Because that's a lot of boys, they came to different, even when they out west and wound up meeting somebody. Okay, so the Department of Labor, they were to choose what boys that were on relief could sign up. And you could sign up for six months, April to October, or October till April, okay? And you could sign up four times, up to two years, okay? A lot of guys only signed up for six years. Some guys, around about 19 or 1937, about 11 percent of the boys just skipped camp. They just weren't ready to go into the mountains. You know, if they were from the city, man, imagine how struck they were. You know, here I am. Well, how the heck am I going to get out of here? You know, and so 11 percent of the boys skipped. And the army never chased after them. They just, they got a dishonorable discharge. Okay. Uh, so who was the head of the Department of Labor for 10 points? Oh, here, sorry. Anybody know? A lady, the first lady cabinet person. Nobody? Okay. Well, here is the army in Paul Smith's building, and they would hire local carpenters. So local guys in Cavendish and Procterville, they got jobs building stuff, okay? So at this time, the Army was getting paid 21 or $22 a month. How much were the CCC boys paid a month for 10 points? $8. No, said eight. nobody raised their hand. Somebody said eight. Eight is incorrect. <laughs> nope. A dollar a day. A dollar a day. That was thirty dollars a month. Twenty-five went straight home to the parents. Did five dollars spending. Now this was we you buy a soda, you know, for five cents or a loaf of bread. How many? Anybody get to see this one? The, the veterans? Can you imagine 5,000 veterans of World War I getting off the train in Barry, Vermont, and going and working, building up those dams? And they protected the, the cities for so long. Anybody ever see this one? Did we pass this around here? Nobody knows where this camp was. Camp is a lot in your town, right? It was on a cliff. Looking down, but there was a road right alongside it. It was pretty tight. No? Okay. Somebody will help me. So the army there. Oh, so Roosevelt, he's a shrewdy. The labor unions were saying, oh, some of our workers aren't even paid a dollar a day. So he hired a union organizer. Uh, what's and he sort of quieted the labor unions. They said, okay, we'll let you, because you're in charge of the whole thing. Then, in 1932, when Hoover was president, this army, this armed group of veterans of World War I came to Washington, and they lived in tents, and they went to Congress and Hoover and said, please give us our bonus from being in World War I and get it in 1945, but we want it now in 32. What did Hoover do? Tore down the camp. Tore down the camp. Who did he send to take care, drive him out? Pershing. 
MacArthur. Pershing? Who said MacArthur? Who said MacArthur? Dave, 10 points, and Perry gets 10 points too. Or Neil? Neil. Neil, you gotta get that right. Pershing? But MacArthur was the lead guy, along with what other general? Ten points again, Eisenhower. 1933, new president. The bonus army come, came again, and they said, please, Roosevelt, give us the bonus. Give us now, please. And who did Roosevelt send to take care of these bonus army? Roosevelt sent his wife. That day, <laughs> he sent Eleanor, correct. She drove up in her limousine. Well, what's the problem, Pat? I have a job. I'll, I'll tell my husband. So they created camps just for veterans. So we have the youth, most of the were youth camp, but some were veterans, like those three camps, those camps that were up by Montpelier, Sperry, and... Did you see this? <laughs> Waterbury. Okay, there they are, playing cards. But they were separated, they weren't with the young boys. Okay, there they are. Look at this. Just picks, shovels, and sledgehammers. They, and wheelbarrows. I don't know how many hundreds of wheelbarrows to build that dam in Peace Barry. How many? Nobody's ever seen that one. You can see it, you're, it's pretty close to where the Barry, you know, with the Granite, right? Granite. <coughs> granite. The granite. Okay. And look at that. Look at the, the average age, I think, was about 40 years old. So you had guys in their 50s. And they, they got paid the full $30. And there was no limit. They could stay the nine years if they wanted to. They gave them physical ins uh, inspection. They didn't want to have anybody too, too tall or too short or too small or weak with any handicaps. They gave them World War I uniforms, clothes to wear, so they look pretty motley crew. Uh, here are the boys either coming or leaving Marshfield. They give a talk at Marshfield. Grotto. How many have been to the Grotto State Park? Oh man, if you haven't been out of Cavendish. <laughs> what a place. No, really. Just two people? My oh. snowmobile in the winter now. Oh, some of you up there. Okay. Uh, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. Then they were given nice clothes. Now they are, you know, their holes were in their shoes. You ever see what the cardboard they put in their shoes? Now they had boots, uh, army boots, clothing, socks, etc. And then later on, Roosevelt saw them in 1938 in a parade. They looked terrible. So, guess what? Let's give them a nice uniform. So I don't know where I got this uniform, but it's really nice now. So when they're braves, or when they would go to a dance, you could imagine the boys when they came into Cavendish, being you know, out for a dance, those girls from Cavendish and Proctorville went goo goo gaga. <laughs> the city boys, okay, they were dressed nice in uniforms, you know, made them, wound up marrying, and such like that. But I'll pass this around. Can you see how nicely made? Yeah, Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And I've got a hat here someplace. We passed it. Flank it around. Okay. Now, did anybody have anybody in the civilian conservation corps want to find their records? Nobody? Yes, you do. All the records were kept by the Army, and they're in St. Louis. So I'll give you this. And maybe, Amy, I'll give you a copy in case somebody comes, you know, didn't make it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. And you could find out what camp he was, uh, what year it was, etc., like that. Oh, I got to show you one more thing because I always forget this one. One lady came up to me. She said they had a uh, recreational. They had a, a place where you could buy soda and candy, etc. This one lady, she said, my husband bought me a CCC ring. And she said, he paid $5. It was whole spending money for this uh, ring. And she said, nobody wants it. Do you want it? 
So here is the ring that he bought to give to his future wife. Mm -hmm. It has a, a transit of $5. Mm -hmm. And then another lady gave me her dad's two rings. So I'll pass these around. Now watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> then he, I'm trying to think of what else I have. Oh, we thought, oh. sometimes I forget things too. They had to drive trucks. Look at this. This driver is required to drive carefully. <laughs> now remember, these boys were 18 years old, and some even lied on their age, were 17 or 16. I had a boy, 14. He, his father fell off the roof of the Ford factory there in Green, uh, Green Island, near Albany. Just the mother, you know, trying to raise the kids. So he went up to the bedroom, got his birth certificate, and the old timers remember the ink eradicator. It was like a mercurial bottle, and it had a glass thing, and I think it was Clorox, and it would just go over the ink and it would disappear. So he changed the date so he'd be 18. Just this little guy, Jimmy Johnson, and he was at the Saratoga battlefield, just digging around there, he even showed me a cannonball when I was there. Then, it, then the, the big city boys beating the crap out of him, and so a big guy like this guy said, well, you know, he protected him. Then he signed up another six months, went to Utah, Park City, you know, where the Olympics were held, and he held, he worked there. So you can just imagine this 14, 15 year old boy going across the United States five hours, five days by train and, you know, stopping and seeing the grandeur of the whole United States. So I'll pass this around, start this in the back row. I got it. Maybe we can start putting those out now. Hey, we can make some bucks. <laughs> can you do that? Do you have a press? Is there a prison around here? <laughs> <laughs> they used to have, uh, do the, make the license plates. Remember that? Okay. So here's the Northfield. I'm going to go there tomorrow. The Northfield camp. You know where they put it? The fairgrounds. Does anybody ever get to Northfield? They don't get out of camp. <laughs> Give your wife a break. Take her, take it. Take her out. You know, get out of Cavendish. <laughs> he goes to Florida in the winter. Oh, he goes to Florida in the winter? Okay. But really, how many are in the 251 club? Okay. You two are in the 251 club? Stay out of the town? I thought they got rid of it then. No? What's the penalty at? Look at this. I learned about your 251 club, so I said, let's do one of Connecticut. But ours is different. We have local people writing little history and interesting places to visit, and a place to get it signed, to keep track. You can get a nice thing for your truck or car or boat. Okay? This is the number one seller in Connecticut. Really, travel. Then I did one, the Adirondacks. That's when I first heard about 251 Club. And of course, there's only 102. Really, there's 101 now. New ones. They doubled up. And the same thing. You have a little history in interesting places. Because a lady was in the audience. She showed me her little journal thing, but they don't give you anything. They just give you the map, $12 a year, okay? And then I did one of my favorite states, <laughs> Rhode Island. This is easy, guys. Forget the 251, 39. And you could get the, the pack now. In a day, you could be able to visit. You gotta go to Block Island, okay? And this, uh, I love it. It was just yeah. here last week. Never answered. I Beaches are clear. Okay. Uh, so there's the Northfield again. Then they had the clinic. They hired a doctor, an army doctor, a navy doctor, 
and he would take care of problems. Okay? Now, if they ever got appendicitis, something serious, what, where was the nearest army hospital? They didn't take local hospitals. The army would take them. So if a boy was in Proctor Piper camp, he was sent to what army hospital? Fort Devon. Was it wasn't was it there? Fort Devon? No, that's Massachusetts. I want Vermont. Northfield? No. Well, I bet you Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen. <laughs> Ten points for Neil. How did you know that? History book. You know. Wow. And where'd you get that year? I had it for a few years. I got it. My brother-in-law gave it to me. Wow. Very nice. I got one from somebody, too. Same it's one. Added. Yeah. Okay. And I'll pass this around. This one is 1937. All the states had one. And look at As the, the towns that the boys were in. And those most of their residents were the people. <clears throat> Yeah, what yeah, towns they came from. Well, I'll pass this around. Did you get to see it? Yeah. Have you seen it? No. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, you see this one. I, did I tell you I went to Bellows Falls? How many have been to Allen's? Gas station there? Yeah. And yeah. Restaurant? Yeah. I was there yesterday. I love to go there. Yeah. I'm, Route 5? Back in Long Island Falls. Now, to get to that camp, I found out if you go to Allen's, south on five, just a smidgen, just a little, right past that one little building, and there's a dirt road. Ponds on either side, you go up the steep hill, parallels 91. There, two pillars, CCC Road in Westminster. That's the site of the camp. Nobody in the town knew where it was. But I finally <laughs> tracked it down. And I drove up the road. I was worried about being shot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> really? I never know. You know probably up. CCC Road. There were two houses. And then I saw a chimney. And I knew it was a CCC camp. I knocked on the door. I was a little nervous. Lady came out. And she said, yes, I own this land. It was a CCC camp, the Bellows Falls camp. And it did the Grafton, nice park there, Grafton. Uh, Townsend, how many been to Townsend? They built that one, and then there's one down below, some kind of pines. They, they, uh, these are all like side camps. <clears throat> so the lady says, one, well, a state representative. I said, yeah. yeah. So when I found out this 90th anniversary on April 5th this year, I said, how about doing a proclamation proclaiming the 90th anniversary of the CCC? So she said, yes, I will. So I went to your capital, Montpelier, and I spoke at the General Assembly, in a building there, and did a slideshow, and I got the award the proclamation. And then I found out you can write your own proclamation oh, for the governor. <laughs> Did you know that? You write it, they'll sign it. Yeah. Look at this. Governor Scott. I tried the same thing in Connecticut. <laughs> Last week, I got the April 5th proclamation in July. <laughs> they said they were too busy. So I'll start this in the front. And April 5th is when Roosevelt signed the Emergency Conservation Work Act. Okay. Because a lot of times I go through and I forget something. And you know what they also did too? Some of these states, they made their own charcoal kilns. Yeah. It's like a beehive, big thing out of bricks. They drop the wood in there, stack it, and then there'd be openings on the side. They start it controlled amount of oxygen until finally it just completely stopped from burning. And that's how you make charcoal. There was a charcoal place in Chester years ago and they pulled that wood all off from Wyndham Stephen Thompson's. <laughs> they were a New York lumber company, but they had their own charcoal. They had charcoal. 
Yeah. 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 Yes. So this was in the state park, in a thrown, you know, in some storage or something. Yeah. So they sold the charcoal the CCC made during the Depression. What are those structures in Project Paper? Are those? Uh, yeah. You're going to see okay. if Pod Scotch could stop talking. Okay. I also, sometimes they have yearbooks like this, which just do one camp. And this is the Pulpnik camp that I got on eBay. And it has some of the things, has other things too. So I'll start this, this young lady here. Thank you. Now, here it is. Here is the Bellows Falls camp. Now, you see the chimney here in the right hall? That's the only thing that's left in cellar holes. Okay? And the lady lives here, and the road comes up this way from that dirt road, and Route 91 is right here. You can't see it it's behind these trees. You see this is? You know what this is? The boxing ring. <laughs> boxing was really popular with the CCCs. I don't know if you grew up in the 50s, I'd be watching the Gillette Friday night, the Friday night bites. Anybody remember those? Yeah. Boy, and the wrestling. Yeah. God, I'd go to my, my Aunt Annie's house because she had a TV and be able to watch wrestling. I must have been maybe around 1950 or something like that. Uh, but here it just shows you the mess hall where the boys ate, the rec hall. Then they put the four barracks around there. Now, here's the question for 10 points. If there's four barracks, and you have 200 boys, 18 to 25 years old. The question by raising hand, how many guys in one barracks? Technically, it should be 50. Who's raising their hand? <laughs> Anybody got an answer? Yes, 50. Correct. 50, 50, 50, 50 makes 200. What a genius. <laughs> that merit only. My God. What do you do? Do you uh, teach math or something? Half my words Mine too. Okay. So here. Now, can you imagine 50 boys, 18 to 25, if any had, had teenagers? Can you imagine having 50 in one room? How much salt either? Hormones. <laughs> so the captain and second lieutenant, how could they watch all these guys? So they would look around in the camp and say, look at this big guy here. Oh, Dave, how would you like to be the leader at barracks number one? For a dollar a day, no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how would you like to be the leader? Fucking quarter. <laughs> so he said yes. Now, if you were the leader, did you see the two stripes on that jacket? Yeah. So you would have the two stripes, and you would be getting $45, not 30. You missed out. You missed out. Now, who'd like to be guy kind of there to check your shirt? Sure. What's your name? Ron. Ron. How would you like to be his assistant? Sure. You get $36 a month. And so you two guys would get 48 guys to keep them in line. Okay, and that helped. Now, when you when you left the camp and you went to World War II, and the and the, the people saw the army saw you were a leader in the CCC. Guess what happened, Neil? Leader or something. Probably. You're a sergeant yeah. right off the bat because you knew how to give up orders. Okay, and mo so many of the guys they said Hitler hated the CCC yeah. because. These guys were trained to follow orders and work hard. Bingo, right there. And you see the garages in the back here? All the vehicles were kept in garages. And they all had a blacksmith. Whenever the, uh, anything needed to be fabricated, hinges, anything, fixing the sledgehammers or the ax, or the saw. They still used the horses at the time too, isn't it? I had one guy, see this, there's one. You've got to come and see this. June 1st, 1933, 
before July. Yeah. The Cobalt Camp was formed, and this guy who had this, uh, that was at this camp, he said, our captain rode around on horseback because he was the cavalry, World War I. So, that's true. And sometimes they would hire teamsters to pull out the things because they didn't have bulldozers. Later on, what was the name of the tractor that they used for 10 points? Starts with a C. I don't know. No. Cleat, cleat track tractor. Anybody, anybody ever seen those? Cleat track. I had one guy in the audience who said, I got one. <laughs> Big track tractors. Okay, namely pull the rollers and the uh, scrapers. Maybe pull out uh, stumps. But isn't that a neat picture? All because I put a story in the newspaper. I'm looking for pictures. Bingo, this lady had it. So that lady who owns that camp, she said, oh my God, now we know where everything was. Now, Elmore. Yeah. How many have been to Elmore? Lake Elmore. Okay. They have a fire tower there. You can see that summer of July and June, the boys lived in tents until the snow came, until those barracks were uh, built. Get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, everything was in order, uh, and raising the flag and lowering the flag, and the captain would come in, maybe once a week, inspection. And if it wasn't in order, Saturday night, you got to stay in camp. You can't get leave. Sometimes the boys we had a guy, a lady in my Springfield, she said, my father would walk 20 miles on a weekend to come to see his girlfriend and then go back to camp. Or a lot of times the boys would just hitchhike. And if they had the uniform on, they would get rides. Now look at this. This is the Waterbury camp where they're building that dam. Now that one, they had 2,600 veterans there. Look at the amount of trucks. The garage, I mean, th this was big time. This is where I'm gonna try to find out. The Northfield camp was at the uh, fairgrounds. Then if you go to Weston, uh, here are the boys hopping in. They rented, I think, this farm. Sometimes the state uh, army would rent land for the camp. St. Albans all be there, I think, in August. I've never been to St. Albans. Anybody go there? They built this beautiful uh, building for changing, etc. Uh, also, Willoughby, mm -hmm. Crystal Lake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody see that beautiful building there? Oh my God, it's just beautiful. You know, it's like really new, modern architecture that they Okay, they built roads. Big track tractor. Look at this. They're building the Danby to Weston Road. Look at this. See, these boys develop muscle, boy. All that hard work. And here they are building dams. At, this is the Waterbury Dam. Then at lunchtime, they had an hour off, rest. Okay. What was their favorite sandwich for 10 points? Raise your hand. Yes, Ben. That was invented in World War II. Hot <laughs> dog. No. That teenage girl back there. No. You're not teenage? Mm How -hmm. old are you? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Bologna? No. no. Peanut butter jelly. Yes. Oh. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Chuck. Chuck. They hated fish. Okay. One time at Indian Lake in the uh, Adirondacks, uh, they were given fish sandwiches, you know, to take on the truck when they were going to work up there at uh, Long Lake. They threw them out the window, <laughs> out, the do out of the truck. The captain heard about it. Oh, it's he at the back. Why, wow, what's this? The residents up there say you're throwing out good sandwiches. But they Test, please don't give us those fish sandwiches. They never had fish sandwiches again. <laughs> okay, now I think this might be in Rochester. Anybody ever see this day or this bridge? This is the Townsend. 
And you know, a lady in Montpelier, she said, my grandfather was the mason that worked with the boys that built that uh, townsend. There they are later on, they got bulldozers. See that, see that tunnel there? Yeah. That's all was underneath the old pillow. And it's just let it out. That was all a big stone structure. Like that? Okay. And then this, I think, uh, is by Weston. They built some little bit. Yeah, it looks like a um, mangrove uh, road there, things like that. Yeah. Then they had, look at, they'd have about six or eight boys at the table, and it was family style. They would dishes, you know, and you could pass it around just like at home. And these boys ate as much as they wanted to. Now, by having a camp in your town of Cavendish Proctorsville, the army bought a lot of stuff right from the stores here. So it brought money to the town. Then they needed somebody to take, uh, take these boys and show them how to work in the woods. So what's your name? Yeah. Jim. Maybe say he was a logger. Okay? And unemployed. And his you his wife? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, come on, give her a break. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Did you ask him? No, we're all set. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So say say that's the wife. And she would say, You need Dave? No. Jim. Jim. Jim, get out of your dupa. Get down there at the camp. They're hiring loggers. They need them. So he would be called a LEM, local experienced man, who knew about logging. He would take a group of boys and work in the woods. Now, say this guy, Dave, he was a, a, uh, a mason. He could be used for building the fireplaces, and those beautiful chimneys. Okay? So they would hire a local guy. So this is more money coming into. And the politicians love this. So when the government said, we're going to get rid of this camp, the town went crazy. No, no, we want this camp. Okay. Look at this. After the camp, after dinner, then they would go to the barracks. And sometimes they would have pet dogs right there at the camp. They ate well on that. And they would have three stoves. They would have homeless on board. you ever hear that? That thing thick that pressed paper, that was the only insulation they had, because on the walls were tar paper, roofs were tar paper. The cold, the, you know, they had space underneath, sort of like a trailer. So the air went right underneath there, and the cracks came right up. So in the winter, Proctor's built the freezing, the, uh, uh, really, really cold. So they had to keep those stoves going. Then they would bring their instruments and have bands, so they would play at an amateur night, maybe on Friday night. There's a boy getting his $36, and all he had to do was order the food, candy, cigarettes, pipe tobacco. And look at look at the rec hall in Northview. Pool table, nice fireplace, sometimes ping pong, nice easy chairs. Here's a Saturday night, maybe the boys get ready to go to Morris. Okay? Uh, here's the Scutney camp. Hey, getting ready to go to their camp. Looks like they're all dressed up. Boxing was really big. They had baseball teams. They had skiing. And also basketball teams. They would have to find a gym to play their games. Maybe the uh, town, a range, wherever they could find to play. A couple of guys like this, four or five, six guys, all they did was the whole time they're in six months, cook. Okay? Uh, then on Sunday, if they wanted to go to church, they would have a truck take them to the uh, church in town. We had a couple churches here in town, right? Uh, if they wanted to. Some places, too, if they had sticks, they would have a uh, army chaplain come to the camp. Then, education classes. And I passed those newspapers. So here's arts and crafts, photography. Some of them even had their own dark room. Cooking, English, uh, surveying, mechanics with no big one. Typing. Boys love to take typing. 
What were the hours? What were the, the, the Good question. Yeah. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Now Jennifer, they would start eight o'clock till four o'clock. They're eight hours. But then the army took over for sixteen hours. But from eight to four, they were under the Vermont Conservation Department. Or if they were in the Green Mountain, the National Park, then the National Forest would be their superintendent. So you had each camp had a superintendent, engineer type person who could do what the plan every day with the projects. You know, if they're building uh, uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, there's even the uh, veterans. You, you weren't forced to. It's all voluntary. And look at the cl a classroom in the band. They even had some of them had raising animals. Uh, and they had to teach them how to drive. And some of these boys, 18 years old, 17 years old, they're driving, you know, crazy teenagers, flip the truck over, some boys died. Hurt seriously. Because no, seat back, no. All they were doing is sitting on the back with a bench of those state body trucks. That's it. And look at this, 15 trucks. And you see, each one had a driver. That's all these boys for six months. That's all they did, drive the trucks. Drive the boys to work, drive the boys to church, drive them out to their lunch, materials if they're driving a dump truck, etc. And they had to maintain. And they had a big mechanic too. <clears throat> had a service all these vehicles. Here's the camp newspaper for Plymouth. The Coolidge Wrangler. All I don't know. The, uh, all that, and you could be able to get these camp newspapers. They're online because the camps sent them to the Chicago Library. Okay? They kept them there. Now what they did is they put them online so you could be able to see the Proctor uh, Cavendish camp newspapers and read about them. I'm on just Google CCC camp newspapers and then they have according to the states. Just pick the state. It's really interesting. Okay, Happy Days. This is a weekly newspaper. Now, question next. I asked this question already. How many states were there in 1933? Raise your hand if you think you know. Yes, what's your name? Amanda's on the board, 10 points. What a genius. 48, okay? Now, besides the 48 states, there were seven territories where the camps were. Who could name one of them? Yes. Mom? Mm, good try not. <laughs> Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you think you know. Yes. Must be Alaska. Alaska, 10 points for Neil. Yes. Hawaii? Hawaii, Jennifer, 10 points. Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico, yes. How many have been to Puerto Rico? How many have been up at El Yunque, the rainforest? You know that road? Built by the CCC, all those cement buildings, the pond. There's a tower. Yeah, Built by the CCC. Isn't that amazing? Now, we said, do we say Alaska? Yes. Hawaii, Puerto Rico. Yes. Philippines? No. Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands, Dave, gets 10 points. Now, who could name one Virgin Island? Raise your hand if you think you know. Yes. St. John, and your name? Jill. Jill, J-I-L-L. Okay, 10 points, you're on the board. What's another Virgin Island? St. Kitts. No, good try. Yes? St. Croix. St. Croix. What's the third one? St. Lucas. Lucas, is it? No. Yes? Correct, what's your name? Paul is on the board. Claire, 10 points. St. Croix, and I was there, and I went to a little library, 
little museum. I mean, it was just up this size. And I said, was there a CCC camp here? She said, yes, they planted mahogany trees and built the park. And I think these boys went straight home every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marty, before you go away from the newspapers, one of these of the year was that I passed the around. Yes, it did. It was the November 1936 issue of something. I think it might have been the other one. Okay. And at the bottom, they're talking about progress in other countries. And at the bottom of it says Germany started a similar labor camp situation. Is this the beginning of the labor camp? When they had when, no, when they had the uh, youth corps, the young boys they would take, and they were training them for war in Germany. Okay. This is not the concentration. No, no, no. Good question. Any other question? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, were women involved in any way in the CCC? No. Uh, Eleanor got them to have a camp in Melbourne, Rhode Island, and they would be like a summer camp, and they did home type thing, sewing, you know, home, home type thing. And the CCC boys in uh, Rhode Island got together with the girls that were there in dances. But Eleanor couldn't get the girls. Yes? Must have been, I know, in the book here. The CCC must have been integrated to some degree. I mean, there's pictures of black men and, you know, this New day. New England was integrated. Now, I was thinking they're democratic. The reason, one of the reasons there weren't enough Afro-Americans to have 200 in Connecticut or Vermont or Massachusetts to have a all-black camp. But New York had all-black camp, Pennsylvania, and all the southern states. They had all black camps because they were segregated. They were the segregated. Director, the Just director disobeyed the desegregation clause that Roosevelt wanted for the CCC and specifically segregated them unless there were not enough black people, black men, to make right. up a camp of 200. Okay. So mm -hmm. last month, I picked up a guy in Rome, New York. He was in an all black camp and he was also a Tuskegee Airman. Can you imagine a hundred years old? He still drives. He <laughs> drives to church and goes to Denny's for lunch with his buddy. Okay? So there's hope for me to keep driving and <laughs> gathering stories, even though my wife said, This is the last book, Marty. Vermont, that's it. <laughs> my number 12, but I, I want to Massachusetts too. <laughs> so I got to put it on the slide. <laughs> what did he do? Boys you have what? Do you have interviews? Um, when I was in high school in 1984, um, my, myself and two other people interviewed 15 CCC men from um, Ludlow and Cavendish, and those um, recordings are at the Black River Academy Museum. She said they don't have anything. So there's, I mean, there's living history of men. Most of them were from Connecticut. Stewie up front would know who they were. My dad. Um, you who? Who knows? Stewie. Stewie. <laughs> Who would my dad have told me to interview? The Laskoviches, I'm trying to think who, but I interviewed 15 different men. Oh my God, um, that would be great. Who? Could you find that out? Could you be able to go to the museum and see yeah, if I, they I still have them? Yeah, I the director and see. I hope she didn't throw them away. We had cassette tapes and they were all transcribed by our school secretary. They were transcribed? They were transcribed. <laughs> okay, could you do me a big favor? Mm -hmm. You're my, oh my, my spy in Ludlow. <laughs> That would be great, and then I could use those in the book. Wow. Awesome. I need to see, always get somebody in the room might be able to help you. We worked well. These are all the things they did just in Vermont. Fire breaks, uh, hazard reduction, you know, uh, getting lists or rust, which I will explain, grading, parking areas, locks. This will be all in the book. They didn't list the box like around here in Brockers. No, does anybody have a picture of it? I don't know where it is, but you know. Would you be able to show me? Or could you get a picture of what's left? Uh, there's not it's just, you know, 38, you know, hurricane came through and everything else, but 
I mean, on the town map shows shows where it comes down off Parker Piper there. Could you could you get a send me that picture? Try. I might be able to get you to win the prize. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's going to beat them. Maybe Dave is coming pretty <laughs> close here. Okay. Uh, I got an answer. Princess Perkins. Yes, it took a while. She went on this. Ten one. points. She was the head of the Department of Labor. And she's the one Social Security told him about that. WPA. So much of these laws that he passed were all because of a woman. Are you aware that the first social security check was distributed to a woman in Ludlow, Ida Fuller? Mm -hmm. The first check ever issued. Mm -hmm. True story. Yeah. Wow, how do you know this? <laughs> I interviewed 15 old men. <laughs> a long time ago. Wow. And Wonderful. furthermore, to show you what was coming to social security, she lived to be 100. She mm -hmm. made it one month. Yeah, retired. Had to wait a couple of years for the fund to fill up. She had a check every year until she turned 101. Wow. Okay. These are all the things, just in your state, okay? In their lifetime, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, this is nationwide. Billion, <laughs> a billion trees were planted, okay? All the different things they've done. Dams, uh, you know, stop the erosion. Look, look at the erosion you guys had. Uh, well, if you look at pictures of Ludlow, Profitville, Cavendish, turn of the century. I mean, there's no trees. Everybody, this was all grazing, right. pasture, farmland. She, she, I think. Uh, yeah, she, yeah. No, that's why you've got the wool there, uh, mm -hmm. the factory. And they fought insects, tree insects. Uh, one of them was the blister rust. Okay, now, how many of you have white pine trees? Anybody? How many of you have blister rust? Really? Today? Well, what they did, they found out if you could get rid of currant bushes and gooseberry bushes within 900 feet of white pines, they held a fungus. They were the host. So in the springtime, the CCC boys would go around, and if these, these berries were close to white uh, pine trees, they would rip them up, let them hang and dry. If they found a farmer, who had, you know, making the jelly or uh, the wine, they ripped them up. And if they wouldn't let them on the land, they'd have to get a state trooper to get on the land. And they made a law, too, national law. You cannot raise currant bushes or gooseberries because of the danger of list of rust. Did you know that? Because I had a forester in my afternoon class. The national, not really. Oh, okay. How many remember these? Yeah. Blankety blank. Yeah. Squishing them. Remember one <laughs> the sidewalk? Oh man, I hate it. The boys had to look in the winter time, climbing up the trees to find these eggmen. Thousands of eggs in these cigar shaped on the trees. They would climb up the trees, and on their belt they would have a can of creosote. And they would paint them, not knowing that they would cause cancer. <laughs> cancer is out loud. I had a guy in Foster, Rhode Island. He said, Marty, I was, you know how they have these creosote railroad ties? He was working under a bridge that had the creosote, uh, a big, what are they call Not logs, but railroad ties. Railroad ties, okay? And he's underneath it. He said, Marty, the creosote was dripping on my head. Guess what? He showed me his head. All the cancer that they have to go every year, scrape it off. All because of that creosote landing on his head. But so many things. Cancer boy. There's a bell phone pulled back in. So the, you know, 6 the guardrails. Yeah. The guardrails in Connecticut. They had the creosote tanks there in Portland. They were drip, uh, putting all the railroad ties, or not the railroad ties, guardrails. You ever see on these old roads? They still have these old round yeah. guardrails. 
They're still there. Lots of creeds. Okay. Then they would have a group of boys in the spring bed. That's when you had the fires. They had 10 boys. They had their Indian tanks and their group, and they would go out. They never left the camp during the springtime because if there was a fire, they'd get the call there at the camp. The captain said, if there was a fire, they sent those boys right at the beginning. Now, in other states, they have uh, uh, fire holes, too, water holes, which they would line with stones, but they said in Vermont, we don't need them because we've got too much water all over the place. So, but in Connecticut, Massachusetts, up at, uh, the Adirondacks, we have the right, lookout towers, they, uh, like the one up in uh, Scutney. Uh, truck trails. Here it is that, if you looked at that uh, catalog I just sent the photos, the rock crusher. Uh, yeah. Danby, look at the rock crusher they have. And look at the Danby Road. It's gorgeous. I had a guy this morning, the last night, no, last, this morning, afternoon, he said he rides his bike. Loves drive you know, 15 miles, yes. Well, my uh, dad's family was from the end. We were going down the spring tenant over there. Uh, during the war, first part of the war, he used to go over and stay at his sister's over in the end. And he'd get up early Monday morning to go to spring to work in the day now. And he'd, he'd go up over the dam, the Dave Road. It's a rough road. In the day, you know, before dawn. To get over to London area and go out to the roof of the wow. to get the spring bit. And look at this, look at the legacy. Look at the beautiful building. That's tough. Uh, one of the towns. Yeah. And that's the same building, too, that is in the Grafton. Anybody ever go to Grafton? Mm -hmm. God, go to it. It's a beautiful town. That one's identical to Gifford Woods up there. Gifford Woods. That's the one by. That's the Shrewsbury camp, drove yeah. all the way over. They maybe had a, what they call a spike camp. They would stay there for a week. It's gorgeous there, right at the bottom of Killington. Yeah, but that road, so there is a CCC road in there, and then it goes up to, like, where were they off that? Where was the camp off that road? Like, was it? Shrewsbury? Yeah. But there's an old well. Is it, yeah. is it near that well? Do you know where the Shrewsbury camp is? Do you know where the elementary school is? In Shrewsbury? That's that's where the camp is. It was. They tore the camp down and built the school there. And I'm going to speak, speak to the kids. So if you ever need me, I need to talk to the kids here about CCCs. Do that. Now look at the Mansfield Base Lodge. Ricker Pond. This was all. CCC boys from Rhode Island up there in Groton. The well is still there. Huh? The well is still there in Shrewsbury. Oh, yeah. Shrewsbury is there. Yeah. There it is. See the well? But they had so much damage. The teenagers and the partiers, <laughs> they just burned the place. Okay. It's gone. This beautiful shelter. Terrible. Uh, we used to, uh, there was a snowmobile trail. I don't know if it still is there, but that snowmobile trail used to go up <coughs> past that camp. And um, <coughs> it was all made of stone, as I recall. But it had been abandoned, you know, it was all, yeah. all the crap. Yes, and I can remember we roasted hot dogs in there. Wow. Gone. Yeah, we Gone. Know, but the stone walls were still there. They even had a, a ski place, Shrewsbury oh. Mountain. That was a big thing for the people from Rome to go there. Did anybody? This was a Mansfield base lodge. That's still the old base lodge of Stowe, right? That's still yeah. there. That's the same CCCs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look at Calvin Coolidge. That's still there. If you go to Groton, look at the Owl's Head. Another shelter. Mill, they would saw the wood. Then the flood of 36. CCC boys help clean out cellars. Greatest generation. These are all the camps. You can't see them. But if you buy my book, uh, if I get it, you'll see the 34 camps. When they started, when they ended, the story. Barry City, you know the granite. Uh, the mines are by the quarries. Okay. Uh, anybody go by St. Anne's in New York? The town of St. Anne's? 
We have so many quarries now on Route 4. See, on the way to Rome. Oh, Fortin. 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 Sorry. Bethel. I spoke at the Not town hall. So. You know how long this was there? Six months. Bingo. Gone. So the guy said, Marty, if you want to see the camp, the, the chimneys are still there. You know where the where the fishing fisher uh, fishery is there, hatchery. Yeah. You go down this road, he said. Then when you get to a fork in the road, go right, and you'll see the chimney. So I'm walking down there by myself. I get to the corner there, and there was something big and black and round above the grass. And I said. I've got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> I took the picture, but he must have ducked his head down just then. But I turned around <laughs> and then ran as fast as I could. Because I, then I went home and I bought a spray. I bought a foghorn. So when I go up to the woods in the air, I've twice now I've seen Barry. When in, uh, uh, it's the one that we in the bottom. What's the town? Dublin. Bullington. Yeah. Okay, saw him there. Ludlow. Here's the Ludlow camp. Uh, what are the things it did? Okay, it started in 20, or 35, went to 37. Then the Escutney camp left the Escutney and came there. And they worked 38 to 41. They built that road. Uh, the lead, seven wing twos, 14 miles hiking trail, forest improvement, the fire tower in 37. Scotty Boys completed many of the projects and that road going up to the top. Mm. And it's skiing. Because that 14 miles of hiking trail, that was in, well, on Mount Lovell or on Scotty you're talking about? Lovell. 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 The other ones that aren't there anymore, they came down the side with it. I don't know anything about where these trails are. Okay. I didn't get up the road, they were doing construction. Up um, to Elmore, to get to the fire tower there, they took jackhammers and chiseled into the ledge to make a stairway. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 wow, they did the trailer. And I think the cabin. Uh, constructed, 37, the trail of Emo. See this guy, uh, I got these pictures from a guy in Massachusetts. His father was at this camp from Massachusetts. And he did surveying at the Pulteney camp. He was also at Ludlow camp, so I got a lot of pictures. Look at, <laughs> look at the projects. Okay, Windsor camp. How many have been to the Windsor camp? Nobody? Yeah. Yeah, where the campsite is. The oh, State yeah, Park. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 nice and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the Summit Road. Can you imagine building that road all the way to the top? Okay. Stone Pavilion. Four water fountains. Uh, stone House. A guy was in the basement. And they had the initials of the CCC boys in the basement. But 19 lean tubes. That is so neat. Did anybody go camping in the state parks of Vermont? The lean tubes? Yes. And one of them has a view of the mountains. I mean, a great way to wake up in the morning, you know, and see. So all of the lean tubes at the state park were built there. All the state parks. There are lean tubes that were built later on. Okay. And you could tell the difference. Okay. Yeah. The log, the nice old log ones, that the CCC. Then they started adding more, but they're the newer version. Good question. Okay. Up Mount Scotty, all the guardrails were all stone walls that they built. Wow. All flat stone. And they're the boys. Ready? Something. Did they, did they build the shelters on the long trail as well, or were there those already there? The per, uh, the Danby camp in the Peru camp did some work on the long trail. I think I passed it today. Coming from, uh, yeah, so the house, but all 103, yeah, I saw yeah. someplace. Yeah. We're on board. Now look at the roads. I mean, they are just graded. They use good gravel. Graded gravel. Maybe gone today. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Look at the guys. Look at them. I love this picture. Good. We're going to keep you duty in the kitchen. I mean, that is fabulous. Okay, here's the Stepney camp, you know, in 33. Oops, sorry. The living in tents. Then the Windsor. Look at that beautiful shelter. And people rent it out. And this is gorgeous. The Wilkes, they built that one too. And they did stone ranger quarters, seven stone water fountains, picnic shelter, comfort station, 12 stone fireplaces, parking area, hiking trail to the pinnacle. Okay? Now look at sports. Skiing was big time. Thanks to Harry Merrill. They it in Sweden. The trail is going up there. This is unbelievable. I think this is in the wrong spot. This one is this pond that the boys created to go swimming on their Willoughby. How many bait into a lake Willoughby? Oh my God, it's huge, isn't it? Whoa, it just keeps going and going. Well, in the woods, in the southern part, is in the woods, there is this where the camp is. And you could just about spot where these shelters are. Now, that thing is just a big hole in there. Because I was wondering where the pond was. They made this old pond. And it, was, it must have been about 20 foot deep. How many have been to men that, you know? Have you been up? Did you go to the camp? Were you a Girl Scout? Yeah. No. They had a Girl Scout camp. Nobody went there? No. Mendon. It's right near Killington. Okay, you go to... Uh, oh boy, what's this map? Up the CCC Road. And now you, they have trail, trails there. Uh, you could hike it. All the buildings are gone, but the fireplaces are there. Oh, is that old? It became a Girl Scout camp. I don't know. They did the fire tower. Okay. I think they did the fire tower. But it's called it was called Tamarack Notch Camp, Girl Scout Camp. Okay? And now they have trail work uh, going through there. Now the North Shrewsbury. <laughs> this is where look at that. Going through that uh, across that road. You know, towards Plymouth. Brown Shrewsbury. <clears throat> so they said that's the reason why that ski mountain didn't keep going because it was so hard to get to in the wintertime because of the snow. And uh, Caretakers Lodge did forest stand improvement, planted 90,000 pine and spruce trees, hiking trails, uh, truck trails, recreation development. But they planted all these trees with it. No trees there before. You're right. Sometimes there were no trees. A lot of times they got farms that were not productive. The federal government, they couldn't pay their loan. The federal government wound up with them. And they, in turn, gave them to the state. We'll give you a hundred year lease. I think that lease is going to be funny out. But look, that's what they Now, there's an elementary school there. And look at all the workers they have. Supervisors. Okay? Some of the LEMs, look at the cheese, <coughs> is that what they're going on? Calvary things there. Yeah, look at that. Okay, sometimes they were lucky to have a buzz saw. I always wanted to have a buzz saw. I hated cutting uh, wood. Uh, and there's that place where Jennifer, you said you went. There are picnics there. Oh, and there it is. That's what it looked like. Look how gorgeous it was. Gone. Because it was in boondocks. Place for party. Okay, that's the only thing left. The well. That's the school. Okay, Brock. Okay, finally. My one picture that I have of this place. What did they do? They built roads, cleared trails for horseback riding and hiking, uh, created a recreation area, picnic area, uh, shelter with fireplaces. Okay, they didn't have there, but they did that to bottom run too. Okay? Because that one had Townsend. They had big skiing there. 
people came from Massachusetts, from Wilmington, Mansfield, for big ski races on that mountain, wherever it is, right, right there by Townsend. Now you go, this is the only thing that says there. There's a road going up to the uh, top. There's two different sections, too. And do you know Tim Morton, the forester? Do you know him? You've met him? Okay. He's the one that brought me in. Look at this, the stone structure. I'm trying to think if that, what that could be. The only thing, well, that could have been the outhouse. <laughs> and that urinal. In a toilet. It could have been a three or four seater. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You see the structure? The structure going this way. At first I thought it was for a drop. Look at the stairway going up this one. You, know, you can find these. Tomorrow, start looking. And look at the, uh, the cellar hole there. Wait, you see this one, ready? That's in the woods. Yeah. Probably the rectal of the Proctor's building. Proctor Piper. Why do they call him Proctor Piper? Who's Piper? Proctor Piper. Well, Proctor was an old Proctor's mill, you know. But who's Piper? Did that guy with the truck have Piper on his truck? So who's Piper? Is that your last name? That's his last name. Maybe he, maybe he uh, doesn't know that he had property. Yeah. Piper. I'll ask him when I get home. Then, is that your husband? Yeah. Because I saw Piper on there and I thought, well, that might have been his last name. That's not his last name. That is his last name. But, oh. But he's from Addison County. He's not from here. Addison County. Right. Okay. Well, the towns here were separated in the mid you know, early, late 1800s because the Proctors all lived here in Proctorsville. And of course, the other part of town, Cavish, was called Duttonville. And Samuel Dutton was a lawyer, and he ran that end of town, and the Proctors ran this end of town. And oh. Okay, we gotta go. Look at this chip. That was from a shelter going up that road. Okay? And fireplaces. Still there in the woods. The state just said, forget about it. Okay? But look at that. Look at that chip. And see this uh, the metal? Because that's where the roof line was. Old line. Yeah. <laughs> Shelter, camping area, forest construction, fire tower, out of Scotland they go. Here's the Ripton camp for 10 points. What famous writer lived in Ripton? Robert Frost. You had your hand raised. Robert Frost. What's your name? Cindy. 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 10 points. She's on the board. Robert Frost. Uh, look at the buildings, the water tower, because they did not pass, you know, they won, we won, it's election year, we want to show we're not spending as much money. So let's not have the camp. Building, who told me that the building was still there? Or was that in Springfield they told me? They remember seeing the buildings there in the 70s. I don't know. How about Rochester? Hmm. That was the National Forest. Texas Falls, recreation area. Go faster. Sharon. This is where I'm going to be tomorrow. Tonight, somebody's taking me in. Uh, Planted large areas, softwood trees, 10 acre pond. Uh, today, it's a 4 H camp, but now it was taken over by somebody else. 4 H doesn't run it anymore, but it's a, a kid's camp. Down there. Downer forest. And when you come in, look at the entranceway still has their the CCC. Look at they have. They still have some buildings left. They still have the mess hall where the kids eat. And a couple of the uh, barracks. These, I don't know, I'll find out tomorrow. The shelter. I don't know. Could have been CCC. And these chimneys? are on the way to a farm that in 1940, it was closed camp 
and they said, professor from Dartmouth, he said, let's have a camp that we could have all boys, no matter what income. It not, they don't have to be on relief. So he brought boys from Dartmouth and Harvard, and let's have a camp. They started volunteering at farmers in, what's that sound? It sounds with a T. No, something else. Well, they started working with the farmers free, okay? So they wanted to do community effort too. But Roosevelt said it sounded good, then, then the politicians said, we're not going to be paying for a summer camp for these rich kids. <laughs> so they said, this camp never happened. They, got, they would not pay for it. But here's the pond they built. Here, it was called Camp William James. Now, he was a philosopher doing good. If we could, if, if we could spend the money that we spend on wars and spend it for doing good, it would be better off. Wouldn't it? Can you imagine the money we spend just now fighting for the poor Ukrainians to, uh, to fight off Russia? But if we don't do it, what's going to happen? What's Putin going to do next? So then the politician said, this professor who at Dartmouth, he was from Germany, he wasn't even a citizen of the United States, and he was a youth corps in Germany before Hitler took over. So the politician said, we're not going to have Hitler's uh, guy coming in here and teaching our boys running the camp. And everything was democracy. Here's the veterans camp. We'll go quick in two minutes. Here's Middlesex. Here's the veterans camp. It's now empty. Uh, on failure. They uh, changed the dam there. Uh, and look at them building the right still dam, putting rocks on the face. Look at what we have now the legacy. This beautiful dam, the right still dam, but it went over. Get it, get you know, it, it, not over the top, but over the water. What do they call that? The recreation area there. The, the spillway. Yeah, it got so look at about how much water it had there when it was low. So you could just imagine for that to come up and then go over the spillway and came in Montpelier. The Waterbury Dam was built to stop that. This is what it looked like, the little river. This is when they started through 2,600 veterans. Look at the camp, look at the buildings. 2,600 veterans of World War War One were all camped out on top of the mountain. The dam was over here, and they were U-shaped barracks. 100 veterans in each barracks. Can you imagine? They had their own. Look at this. Now they had the machinery. This is the largest constructed dam by the CCC in the whole United States during this time. Look at the size. Can you imagine the amount of dirt? Now, for 10 points, in order for the water not to go through, what did they put in the middle of the dam? Clay. 10 points. Meal. But even still, it gets through a little bit, and they have sensors today. They have their own hockey rink, their own ski jump. Look at this. Their own movie theater. They got, did gardening. Their library, look at this. Their own church. That was later moved up north. But look at an aerial view of all these buildings. The guys, 2,000, almost 3,000 guys. They had a fire department, they had sewage. It was incredible. Now you could go camping here. Anybody do camping up there while there? President Roosevelt came. Look at the dam today. Oh boy, I don't know what happened. Uh, there it had one side. But they had a trail. World War II came. We now needed the boys to fight. They were never officially closed. How many have been to Denver? It's called Red Bombs. Nobody's ever been there. I was there with 10,000 people. Crocker, what's his name? Crocker from the British Singer and Steve Miller Bank, and 10,000 people under the stars. 
No rain. Time for rain. How many have been to Virginia? Skyline Drive? CCC. The one upon the saw that there was fog. Look at this. Look at this. Townsend. You could go. We have a northeast. We have a museum that people from alumni from all over in New England brought their stuff. You could visit this museum. It's in Connecticut. And it's open every Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 3. And anybody wants one of my other books, $20 each or two for 35. Here's my wife and I with our 50th anniversary on Newport Island at this is called the Inn at Castle Hill. $600 a night. I said, Lynn, we're not going there. <laughs> for the 75th deal, I told her. <laughs> By that time, it'll be a thousand. Here, my my uh, baby Ryan married uh, Jenna, and we have twin girls, five and a half, Anna and Lily, Luke. My daughter Christy has two teenage girls, and not Luke, and my son-in-law from Old Orchard Beach. They have a hotel. Anybody wants to go to the hotel? Six hundred dollars a night? <laughs> no, two hundred dollars right on the beach. In fact. Tracy, the librarian, she called, I called up my daughter, who's there, because the mother-in-law died, and my daughter is helping to run it along with Lydia. And here's our house on Lake Pocatapog. And thank you so much for staying so late, and who helped on everything, the projector, and anybody who could help me, please let, let Amy know and get in contact. Thank you for suffering through this, but I hope you learned something. Very right. good suffering. Yeah. And if, if you don't want, if you don't want that, that brochure that I gave for CCC Legacy, just give it back so I can use it for the next bus. But if not, I hope you could join and come on uh, trips with us and keep alive CCC. So, what's your first name? Sarah. Sarah. Your assignment is what? I have to get you the interviews that we did. Of Neil, what's your sign? We'll see if I can find a pathway of buffs under a proper paper. Can you imagine that? That was must been. And the one at Townsend, they had a ski jump uh, at that park. Thank you, Amy and Claire, for helping. And thank you all. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, in the forests of the garden, where lumbered and left to burn, farmland and stream heading for trouble as a century turned. The market crashed at 29, there was no work for many, a dust cloud settling down on the once proud land of plenty. There were hobo boys in jungles, teens out on the street, Young men on the farm, even there they couldn't make ends meet. So when FDR was elected right away, he made a plan. He said, let's put those boys to work. Let's restore our land. It was heirs to the say, 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 planting trees and more. Cheers to the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps. A quarter million enrollees in just a few months' time. From 33 to 42, there was 3 million point five. All in Roosevelt's tree army, soil soldier CCC. They restored the woods and restored their lives. That's their history. With axe and hoe and shovel, they leaned into their task. Fire trails, riverbanks, campsites, all that they were asked. From California to Maine, Skyline Drive to Yellowstone. They made 30 bucks a month, and all but five went home. Three billion seedlings with Matic, Axe, and Maul. The message was, think ahead, and what they did not live us all. So here's to the CCC, 
planting trees and more. Cheers to the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps.